and we are happy that you are here and uh, please go ahead with your lecture. Many thanks for being with us. Okay, thank you very much for introduction and also for invitation to participate in this event, which I'm glad to do that. And I think there is something in my computer, in my site. I heard this kind of the AI or some of noise, which I think we, we can see. So first I would like, I should go back, okay. So today I'm going to talk about quickly about what's the current prime editing we developed and established for RICE and trying to use this technology for engineering disease resistant bacteria blights of RICE. And as you know, RICE is a particularly RICE affect disease and affect the rice growing area in Asia and Africa and is the pathogen caused by Santomonas or RISE, pathogen or RISE, and we call it in short XOO, particularly, yeah. You guys heard, heard about this site noise? No, we can't, we can't hear it, it's okay. Okay, it's okay, I heard it, so I thought that this would be automatic because to the, the whole meeting. So anyway, so it's the cause the on, on rice cause the severe disease is a vascular disease. And we use this disease as a model to study micro host interaction at the same time. This disease could function as a model for some other important crop disease like wheat streak, citrus cankers, cutting blight, and the cassava blight, which caused by Santomonas at the same time affected by the tau effect, which we'll talk about later. So I don't have time to talk about the disease in, in, in overall, but I will present this working model to present how we can use genome editing to demonstrate or to use some of the lateral pathway to harness some of the pathway to make disease resistance in plant. First, we work on the bacterial blights uh, or work on the, uh, on the XO site, identify some effector genes especially tau effector, type 3 effector, at the same time, and trying to identify the host targets. And then the targets will be, be either resistant gene or disease susceptibility gene. At the same time, we're just trying to study the interaction between those two components from bacteria side and the host side, and finally engineer the disease. So let's come up with the disease model which Santomonas arises to interact the, or XOO interact with the plant cell and use a type, type 3 secretion system to inject the tau effector. Sorry, I, I, I heard, I, I heard yeah. about this noise myself, so <laughs> affect my talk. So anyway, so the tau effect got into the plant cell and then the first thing is they're going to to attack the, the, the disease susceptibility gene. One group of the tau effect gene is, the tau effect gene target the sweet gene. One group of the disease susceptibility gene we call S gene is the sweet. They attack the promoter of the sweet and elevate the sweet gene expression and cause disease susceptibility. And then how effector or this sweet gene could be have the could have the mutation in the promoter element for the target side, and then those sweet gene or susceptibility gene become a disease resistant gene. So that's a natural resist gene happening in the disease system. At the same time. Kind of. So, I, uh, hey, Bing, I'm not entirely sure. We can, I can hear something very occasionally in the background, but it's not right. So, in the background, us. like whenever Leaf come into the meeting or leave the meeting, I can hear this out, out yeah, bounce okay. at the indicator or tell me somebody doing this out or in. And then, <laughs> can you just enable, disable me with that? Yeah, I will, I will, um. I will sort that out. Trying yeah. to figure out, trying to figure out, I don't know how can I do this from my side. So anyway, this tau effect at the same time we use the general transcription factor 
or gener general transcription factors, for example, TF2 gamma 1 or TF2 A subunit, small subunit to activate the disease susceptibility gene. So in nature, there's in nature, there's one single mutant could convert that TF2 gamma subunit into the resistant gene by dump down the activity of the tau effector. So that's another way the nature can fight back against this tau effector to cause disease. And then another pathway is that there are some dominant resistant gene called the executor resistant gene could trap the tau effector to activate this gene and cause resistance by activating the gene. And then there's the other group of the NLR type resistant gene could recognize the fullness tau effector and can trigger resistance. And this resistance including the cell days and the strong resistance. At the same time, the bacteria could generate some truncated tau effector could, which could avoid the recognition of the NLR XA1 type resistant gene recognize the fullness at the same time can activate the resuppress the, the, the resistance. So this is called the inter interference tau effector. So this is the So that's why how, how, how this system work. And then switch back to the switch gear to the prime editing, which we already know. The, the prime editing is the system derived from the CRISPR-Cas9. Many, some now there's people demonstrate that Cas12A could engineer it into the prime editing system. For this CRISPR-Cas9 system, so you have the Cas9, like Nikkei Cas9 has one side muted and makes the single breakage on the double, on, on the double string. And then the guide RNA has the five prime N can function as the recognition for the Cas9. At the same time, has the three prime N extension, which including the reverse RNA template, which could containing the edit desired edit nucleotide, and also at the three end could contain the complementary string, could match the the DNA strain or the, the leaked DNA sequence. So in that case, the RNA could function as a template as the, for the reverse transcription of the one genomic strain caused by the leaky Cas9. So once they create this extended strain with the reverse transcriptase linked with the Cas9, so form a three flap, three prime N flap, at the same time, the original string has the five and the flap. So this flap could function to either cut this three flap and can with, with no editing or cut with the five prime slab, flap and then incorporate, incorporate with some edits. But this process even without editing this could go again, could do another cycle of the edit again as long well as the Cas9 I'm sorry, that's okay. And the, anyway, so that's like kind of a cycle. If you want to make an edit, the CRISPR Cas9 could not make any leak again. And then if not make an edit, and then the Cas9 could make again, make the edit again. So that's kind of the circle, which that's why this could increase the efficiency of the edit. So to, to make the CRISPR-Cas or to prime editing enable this, this engineering, so first thing is we generate the guide RNA or pick guide RNA or prime editing against guide RNA. And then in that case, we could incorporate, change the TF2 gamma subunit, which, which in chromosome five to convert this susceptibility gene into the resistant gene, which includes the, called the XA5. 
I'm so sorry. This is something wrong. I could not figure out the room. No, I, I can't. Sorry, Bing. I can't figure out what's happening. When, when someone, as you said, when someone tries to join the meeting, then some sort of AI voice appears and I cannot, well, I'm not going to, we're not going to admit anyone else to the meeting now. Um, okay. So hopefully that will try it. So don't, so Katrina and, and being, uh, and uh, Gertz, don't, don't admit anyone else to the meeting, but okay. uh, we'll try and, um, we're looking around for, for solutions, but failing at the moment. Sorry. Okay. Could, 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 could something wrong with my computer, this room software, which I think opened up. So that's, it's not for your fault or some home. Anyway. So in, in that case, we could convert this TF2 gamma subunit into the XA5 by changing two nuclear types. For example, this is what the happen is like for the TF2 gamma subunit in chromosome five has the two nuclear change. That two nuclear change could convert into this one amino acid change from the V to E at 39 amino acid position. So with that, we could incorporate the guide RNA, which contains the, the sequence, which could change this to nucleotide. So once we have this generated this transgenic plants, we use the genotyping or just use the PSA method to amplify this region and digest the PSA product with the restricting enzyme SML1 which is the gain side of this nuclear type change due to the nuclear change. So with this, as you can see, if the, if the PISA product, that's so, so in the way. And if somebody type in the chat and then the, the AI read out too. So whatever change with the system, I heard about this. So in, anyway, so if, if we say this DNA PISA product got cut with two bind, which means is the complete digest or complete is complete edit of two allele. If there's no edit, there's no cut, which means there's no edit. If there's partial cut, which is the is the monoanalytic, is the one audio of the chromosome got cut or got edit. So with this, we can see the frequency of the efficiency is very high. The only out of like almost eighty percent of the T zero plants got edits, including the monoanalytic or bioanalytic. And then some of the like a byproduct which has a deletion, the frequency is very high. At the same time, we do the deep sequencing to figure out if those two amino acids got changed. Indeed, the amino acid got changed. So this paper was published in Plant Biotechnology Journal last year. And if you guys are interested, we could go ahead and read it. At the same time, we got the T0 plant because it's the is the hit is is the Resist genetically recessive mutant or edit or resistant gene. So we have to get the two or new edits. So we in that case, what only those bionic plants could could be genotype or could be phenotype for resistance. So indeed, some of the T0, which has two or new edit, become resistant as expected. So next strategy we just to use the use the non-functional executor gene, which is not contain, does not contain the the EBE or tau effect toxide. So the resist the recessive resistant gene could not function for resistance. But if we can incorporate some of the tau effect element into the non-functional resistant gene, and in that case, the tau effect could activate this non-functional resistant gene can trigger resistance. So that's the strategy we can return, or we, we can make this non-functional resistant gene become resistant by knocking in some of the cis element in the promoter of those genes. In that case, it will be make the inducible or maybe depend on the talk effector dependent resistance. So in that case, like for example, there's one gene we call the XA23. 
So the X twenty three is a recessive X twenty three is a, is a susceptible X twenty three because they do not contain the tau effector binding sites as in the promoter. So we, in this case, we try to lock in thirty four nucleotides in front of the in front of the promoter of the non functional X twenty three. So in that case. With this, due to the lock in sequence, we have gain of the two restriction sites. And with this two restriction site, we can use this PISA product to digest for digestion, and then we can genotype those. At the same time, we do the deep sequencing of this PCR amplicon. As you can see, some of the lines, some of the lines contain perfectly insertion of 34 or 34 amino nucleotide in front of the promoter and the, indeed the gene can be turned on, the plant become resistant in response to ever access seven, which is one of the tau effector. And also the efficiency is very high. It's almost at the same time we have some of the imperfect or imperfect edit, but we have very good perfect edit. So we can use this to do resistant gene and also can do use can can combine two different of the strategy for resistance, which means can broaden the spectrum of resistance by use the dual prime editing by incorporating this X, XA5 and also XA23. So with that, we could have achieved very high efficiency too. So the efficiency is very high for two genes, even almost can reach 40% for the, for the resistance. At the same time, those resist, this edit plants become very resistant as we expect against different of the tau effector. As you can see here, the, the edit efficiency is very high. And then the next, Partly because the single and the double edit become so efficient. So we just push the envelope or push the limitation to say we can do the multiplex. So in this case, can we do the four? So we with the module or module assembly, use the module assembly method, make individual modules, and those modules could assemble into target single gene, two genes, four genes, and three genes. So in that so in, in in that case, and then we can use assembly method to assemble multiple up to four guides, and same time we can incorporate with those guides into the one single construct to the edit. So with that, and we pick up two herbicide resistant genes, and we pick up two disease resistant genes, and as you can see, the efficiency is very high among those four genes, which could reach about 40% of those T0 plants contain four gene edits. And then the plant become resistant to herbicides as expected, and also resistant to the disease resistant, which will be there. So in that case, I think we, by the way, the system which we have for those four guides were be put into the other gene and then the paper published the two and recently. So if you are interested, you can go to the app gene and request this and test this to see if it works for your system. So to summarize this work, and we use in my lab in general, so we use genome editing tools and which we didn't talk about the others like Cas9 target mutagenesis, Cas12 target mutagenesis based editor and also including the CRISPR activator, which work pretty well in our lab too. So we use these tools to demonstrate the disease susceptibility gene or identify disease susceptibility gene, resistant gene, and elute the mode of action. At the same time, we're trying to use different strategy to change, to harass, to, to, to harness up those resistance or susceptibility gene, eventually make the disease resistance or some other improved trees. So with that, I will be just stop here. 
and or cloud people in my lab, which have been working on different projects, which I don't have time and chance to talk about it, but we just focus on the prime editing, which I think is most excited technology, which has superior or has advantage over some other general you know, editing platforms or applications. This is the, I think this will be very, very useful in for, for change of to recapture, recapture of the genetic variations at the same time to bring all those genetic variations into single plant and recapture this function of those genetic variations. So that's, where be, that's why I think it would be very good to try this prime editing for your research at the same time, trying to improve and make it work much better, more efficient. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry for this and noise and this AI or some other generates noise, which I think would need to be distraction. Thank you, Ding uh, Yang, for uh, this nice presentation. I don't know if it's now best that people type their question in the chat or just raise their hand and ask it uh, in, in the meeting because of this AI uh, <laughs> interruption. So are there questions? Yes, please. Okay, there is a, a question uh, in the chat. Is it possible to do prime editing in uh, decotal like soybean and uh, canola? Well, it's possible, certainly. And there's look like there's some challenge for DICA. And in our lab, we try rhabdopsis and tomato and the soybean. And currently, we are the, we can take we can detect the prime editing. But the efficiency is very low, and we could not detect the the inheritable edit. And around the world, I just recently found only there is only one paper by in Bayer Archive a couple of weeks ago from the Korea group. As I think that's the first paper demonstrates is time editing work efficiently and inheritably in the DICA plants. So I think there's some difference. There's some challenge between Monica and the Daika. In Monica, prime editing work very efficiently in rice, maize, and one paper or paper one paper published in wheat. Yeah, I know that paper. We are also trying it on potato when it's really, really not efficient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, another question is here um, related to the flap cleavage step. Uh, did you see it as a limiting step towards the efficiency um, or not? Well, I think the limitation will be the three flap got the three newly generated flap got cut and then the five prime and flap got back. So there's people or there maybe there's some strategy you could use some exonucleus to cut off this five prime flap, so which could increase the efficiency for some of the difficult situation or scenario. Um, and then there is a question from Sadie: which software are you using to design the PEC uh, RNAs? Well, the thing we use, there's like a cup of page, there are a cup of software which we use. One, we use the regular, like CRISPR software, CRISPR 2, and that will pick up the TAC sites for the leak guide RNA and also for the pig guide RNA. At the same time, we use one of the AOT, another software which I forgot exactly the name, and they use that to make the, the 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 linker or to predict or to choose the linker which could put at the five three prime of the pig guide RNA. Okay. Um, then I see a question of Julie Neveu. Um, sorry, perhaps I missed it, but have you used improved forms of prime editing? Uh, or the original form with NCAS9 and wild type uh, reverse transcriptase? 
Where else so far is the, the prime editing change very fast from P2, now P2, now just a couple of days ago come out with P7. So there are all sorts of the prime editing platforms depend on engineer of the, the NCAS9, engineer of the RT, use different type of the RT, and also use some of the, 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 the gene or factor which can help or can, monit can modify or interfere with the host repair mechanism. So th there are different of the, 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 the system. Currently, we, we find work very efficient with that PE max three or PE max five. Yeah. Um, then I see a question. If any wild type genotype is not amplifying with any SSR gene linked markers, is it mean that there is no resistant gene or any possibility of respective susceptible allele, but the genotype didn't give resistance or the susceptible band in PCR? Maybe that's not exactly the, the, the completely true or completely right, depend on the case you use it, because mm -hmm. the, the, the SSR marker even itself could be variable and it's not universal. So that, and also some of the RG, for example, would be absent from the, the whole genome of the particular genotypes. So the SSR may not be there. And so that could be case by case. In general, genetically, the SSR marker must associate or linked with the resistant gene or susceptibility gene, but also depend on how far this SSR marker is from your gene of your interest, gene of interest. So I think that's still case by case, depend on multiple factors, cannot be generalized. Okay. Um, and then someone asked to clarify, um, did you target it more than one nucleotide in prime editing at first because there is a multiple nucleotide change? And if yes, does it affect the editing efficiency uh, significantly? Well, that, that, that's, that's another aspect we find this editing efficiency depend on the multiple factors. First, the pack site. And sometimes if you want to edit it, that would not give you much choice of the choose the pig guide array, even though it give the choice of the leak guide array. So to limitation of the pig guide array, which determine the efficiency of that guide array for DK or for, for, for the single string cut. So that's one factor. And the second factor, which will be how many of the edits you want to incorporate in. Some could be insert, has multiple insertion, multiple nucleotide insertion. Some could be single or, or couple of it. And then there's one interesting paper published and we are trying to adopt it. The, you can make, you can change one nucleotide of you want it. And then you can make some of the Nonsense, non nuclear change, which is a nonsense new edit, which will not change the amino acid, but can just change the nuclear tides or adjacent to the real target change. So, in that case, that may fall, may fall or may trick the repair mechanism, make the edit more efficient. So there's kind of some strategy you can use to make the edit more efficient. And sometimes like one nucleotide change work very efficiently. Sometimes you can, if you can incorporate a couple of force nucleotide change, which could fool the, the repair system, make the, make, the, make the edit change. I think the main factor would be the peak guide RNA or the activity of the peak guide RNA. And sometimes the leak guide RNA also help too, because we have some evidence. One leak, one, one peak guide RNA did work out of top, but when we test different for leak guide RNA, and then eventually we make it work at a reasonable rate. 
Then um, I see two more questions in the chat. Uh, the first one is, did you evaluate resistance, uh, resistance genotypes for their uh, phenotype performance under the hotspot areas for the target disease? That, yeah, because in the US, we don't have this disease. And we de depend on the cooperator to test the slides in their country and they import the the the, the, the seeds will face some challenge. You have some regulatory issues, and but we test all this in our greenhouse or in our containment growth chamber. Um, and then another question you mentioned about having imperfect edits. Uh, was it related to the off targets or the edits you wanted to incorp incorporate? Well, I I talk about the perfect inf edit in terms of the edits, which incorporate what we did, and then in contrast of the imperfect or the perfect is the imperfect imperfect edit or byproduct, which have some of the sequence from the guidance scaffold incorporated into the site. At the same time, the leak guidance and the peak guidance could make some of the deletion at that tax site. So that's the that's we call the byproduct edit or imperfect edit. In other in in the other location in the genome, that's a different story because we barely find some guide off targets depend on the guide RNA. And we did the whole genome sequence of the several lines, and we didn't find any evidence of the off target in the genome wide associated with the guide RNA because that's reasonable, or because this system is makes the leak, makes the single strain DNA. Single strain DNA has less damage or less disrupt or off target as the double strain, like Cas9 situation. Okay. So um, I don't think there are more questions uh, in the chat. So um, I want to thank you for your lecture and for answering all the questions. Um, so thank you again. I don't know, Gerant, if I just close or you want to say something more? Uh, not especially. No, thank you very much. Let me just uh, reiterate my thanks to uh, Ivo and, and Bing for, for your talks and to yourself and, and Gertz for, uh, for for helping out to uh, 